Davening ran like this. No more for that cookie stick. A what? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I appreciate your specifically told me to come and assuage any concerns you may have. Thank you. He saw you suffering over Martin's absence one morning. You know, when I had the congregations. Then you got paid to suffer. <laughs> now you're doing it with right, right. <laughs> But it's still, you know, I. I uh, get concerned when I notice that. I, we noticed that's why. Right. Right. He's fine. He just had an early doctor's. Good. Okay. We're going to get right away. I'm going to start right away with the learning sponsors and then we'll get into the Gemara. Right. So while people can get their coffee and a nush. Right. Okay. Year of learning by Sue and Arnie Garlic. In memory of Marco Proman and Philip Mann and Yisrael David Ben Aratsvi Hirsch, Beryl Ben Aratsvi Hirsch. Yosef Maya ben Harav Tzvi Hirsh, Henya Rivka Pro Rajna Bat Harav Tzvi Hirsh. In the memory of family murdered in the Holocaust, Harav Tzvi Hirsh ben Shlomo Yaakov, Sarah Bat Ephraim, Yisrael David ben Harav Tzvi Hirsh, Ephraim ben Harav Tzvi Hirsh, Adia Bat Harav Tzvi Hirsh, Miriam Bat Harav Tzvi Hirsh, Pesel Bat Harav Tzvi Hirsh, Shalom ben Harav Tzvi Hirsh, Shlomo Yaakov ben Harav Tzvi Hirsh, Shmuel ben Harav Tzvi Hirsh. She will share her children and grandchildren. In memory of her uncle, founding member of BRS, Dr. Israel Brook, Israel Ben Arav Akiva, Marsha Fedebush and family, in memory of her husband, Dr. Ariel Paul Fedebush, Royal Pinchas Ben Arav Shimon, Sharon and Fred Liska, their family and many friends, in memory of her dear mom, Harriet Friedman, Elbas Yaakov, Leslie and Gail Kaplan, in memory of their parents, Harry and Marjorie Sedell, Irving and Pearl Kaplan, <coughs> friends of Avi Gidler. Avramea ben Shimon and Martha Gidler Charnabat Yeshaya, children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren of Toby Paris. Where is Sid, by the way, today? Sarah Toba Bad Yisrael Dov, in her memory. Friends of Malka Levy, Malka Bad Yosef. Friends of Joe Wolf, Yosef Ben Chaim. Charlie Gelfenstein and Sam Levine, in memory of Ramona Levine. Rachel Matabat Asher. A month of learning by Marsha Fetterbush, in memory of her husband, Oriel Pinchas Ben Arav Shimon by Gary and Marsha Schrager, in memory of his father, Dovi Ben Yosef, and his mother, Freda Bas Hendel, Dov Bodlander, in memory of his parents, Tzvi Ben Yaakov Yitzchak and Bela Drash, Abbas Arav Dober, and his in-laws, Yudah Tzvi Ben David Nachum, and Alta Chaya Bar Avram Yosef, Mel and Haran Haller, in memory of his father, Avram Ben Zev. We have a day of learning today uh, in Plus Torah Fund by Ruth Kosman, in memory of her mother-in-law, Sarah Bat Eliezer. Also today, a day of learning by Marilyn and Rabbi Yigal Kornblum, in memory of his father, Mordechai ben Menachem Mendel Ravivka. May the Shamas have an Aliyah, Crank Rafia Velti Shir Shamatuya, and the Chobane Yisrael, a good Geben Shtia. Amen. Okay. Harvey, I know you're there. Okay. Just a reminder, everybody, that today, a week from today, we'll be starting the new Masechet. Okay. Bates. Everyone, anything to report? He's obviously too busy to do it this time. We'll forget it. Okay. Time. By the way, my wife saw that they were no, they were recognized as a new restaurant opening in the, coming up. And it was in the food pay section of uh, your Sun Sentinel, but the, it did not say whether it had a heksha. ORB? Okay. All right. This is uh, Devash. Devash, as it's called, right? No, no. Devash is another store over there. Steakhouse. Which is not not a food store. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's, it's, it's near Devash, is near um, Home Goods and Marshalls over there. Yeah. Uh, this is on the other side of Glades Avenue. All right, I will tell my wife that you're a better spy than she is, okay? <laughs> Great, thank you. Very good, okay.
So we'll try to make other arrangements then. Okay, well, we're up. No, I, I know what you're referring to. I have no idea. I didn't see the. Okay, on the bottom of Memtet, Amud Bays, towards the very bottom. Okay, so there's the Gemara there. Right? And why is we saying that? Let them bring the barrel with consecrated water already in it. Right? Amar Ze'iri says Ze'iri, Kasavar, Ein Shi or Lamayam. So Ze'iri wants to give us one possible reason, right? Because we don't have a specific measured amount that's required for the water libation. Okay? Uklay Sharit Mikadshin Shalomi Dats, a plus, says Ze'iri. Furthermore, right, a temple vessel that doesn't, it's got to be sanctified with intent, right? Ve'im maite b'mikudeshet, anu and amud aleph, our page for today. Hold on a second. And if they were to bring it and it was consecrated, if ho belina, it would become disqualified by remaining overnight. So now your question is, why are we making a seal on Sukkot when there's another parrot? And there's another. And I have parrot commission. And we, we all have parrot commission. Yeah. We, we have, it's only a, a seven or eight. Oh, that's, that's a week from today, right? Oh, we'll finish it's it. It's not today. It's a week. We'll finish it. Seven, eight. Right? We'll finish it. I wouldn't skip it, Sam. <laughs> Okay. Now, Chizkia is going to give us a different reason, right? He says, Chizkia Mars, as he says, Clay Sharet, Ein Mikadshin Elamidaat. Again, the same idea that a utensil utilized as part of any part of the worship needs to have some sort of consecration with intent, right? Right, yeah, because other if, the only way it would be problem of lena is if it's been sanctified. Fine, right. So theoretically, if it's not done with intent, then it would be fine. Right. It's just all the same. Exactly. And that's what the Gemara is going to tell us. Uzera shema yomru ladat nit kadshu. Perhaps people might think the rabbis made a decree, lest people think, okay that it had been intentionally sanctified and Lena doesn't apply. And what's the problem? They therefore might have a question about leaving uncovered water being acceptable, okay? Remember, that's what we saw before. We said it was the question of Migule, right? That was the issue. So what happens here? Amar Rabbi Yana, he says, Amar Rabbi Zera, in the name of Rabbi Zera. Afilu tema yeshi or lamaya. Even if we were to say that with regards to nisuchay amayim, the water libation, okay, that there is a minimum shield. No, maximum. Well, or it's got to be look. both. It's got to be both, a minimum yeah, and a maximum. Point here is he brought Two days water, right? Then it, people might think that it's really only one day, because right. Well, we're going to get to all right. Yeshi or the ain mikad shim elamidat. So even if they think right that there is some sort of shear connected with the water, but we don't have to worry about the fact that consecration is tied into okay intent. Right? They, the concern here basically is they're going to draw the conclusion that there might be no requirement of lena with regards to liquids for libations. That's the essential issue. Okay? That maybe they think that that water was brought for a different purpose, not, not for the purpose of the uh, water libation. Okay, all right. What happens? Nishpacha o nitgalta. Let's say that water 
spilled out or it was uncovered. So the Gemara asks, So why is that the issue? Maybe we should put some sort of a strainer, I'm gonna use that term, on it, okay? Then we'll say that our, our Mishnah doesn't follow the view of Rabbi Nehemia. Why? The Tanya who taught as follows, Masnenet yesh bo mishum gilui. That even using a strainer, okay, that's not sufficient. That still allows the top of the water to be uh, accessed potentially by a snake is what our concern is, right? Amar Rabbi Nechemia. And Rabbi Nechemia says, Ematai, Bisman Shehatachtona Megula. Okay, that concern is when the container is such that it's on the bottom of the, where the water is included in the bottom. Okay, and you have this question. Aval Bisman Shehatachtona Mechusa. But if you have a situation where let's say the, it's a two-part container and the bottom part is covered. And even if the top part is uncovered, right? What happens? Okay, we do not have a concern there about it being uncovered. Why? Why? Because the poison of a snake can be compared to a sponge. Right, that would be one possible explanation. Tzaf v'omeid b'mkomo. In other words, that the viscosity of the poison in terms of water is a big concern because that poison could actually, doesn't just, do we say it floats or does it get absorbed into the water? Okay, so that's the concern. His view is that it floats like a sponge would float, but that maybe, on the other hand, it could get absorbed, right? Afilu tema rabbi nechemia. We might even say it's according to the view of rabbi nechemia. Amar, because I would say then, the amar rabbi nechemia, lahed yot, that we're dealing this with the common, average person. Avali gavoa, but using water for a libation on the mezbeach, okay, which is designated for Hashem, Mi Amar, could we say even then that that would be acceptable? Right? Valid lay the Rabbi Nechemia, okay? Akrivehu na pechatcha hayetzcha o hayashar panecha amar Hashem tzvao. So therefore, we're going to ask in the, the following then, doesn't Rabbi Nechemia hold by this idea, right? Based on the passage that says, namely in terms of things for Gavoa, for Hashem, you present on my altar loathsome food. You say, have we have loathed you when you present an, a blind animal sacrifice, nothing is wrong. When you present a lame or sick animal, nothing is wrong. Doesn't he hold by that? Okay, so the answer is, all right, he must certainly hold by that and therefore, Okay, even Rabbi Nehemiah would say, therefore, the water left uncovered, even though it's possibly strained, is not permissible to use for Nisu Hamayim. Okay, and we finish Hadrana Lach Lulav Ba'arava. Okay, now we get to a new piece. Okay, a little musical interlude. It's right. <laughs> Here, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, Corin, by the way, has an interesting piece of a picture, okay, uh, which they show a Roman frieze, F R I E Z E, okay, a uh, sculpture kind of item where they actually show the a. Uh, individual playing a fruit, a flute, okay? And actually, if you think of the old- uh, It's a really a recorder. Right, okay, well, yes, but it also could be similar to a smaller version of what Pan, the Greek god Pan, 
used a kind of flute, okay, the kind of thing. So in other words, so the idea of a flute, okay, in the note in Corinth was the fact that it perhaps, while we often find other instruments referred to, okay, particularly in the Psalm 150, right? Are we all familiar with that? The, something was unique about the flute, either because of its sound or because of, of its... The, it played solos at the beginning of the piano. In, in any case. So that's why the flute here is mentioned, particularly in regards to the idea of rejoicing in the holiday. Okay? And we have a very clear statement besides the Pasuk Visamachta Bechagecha, that there is a clear uh, message that while we're supposed to rejoice in all the holidays, Sukkot Alachat Kama Vacham. Okay? So keeping that in mind, we now go into the Mishnah and the Gemara. Okay? Pechalil, when do they sound the Chalil as part of the rejoicing? Okay? Now, it could very well be that this was we saw, by the way, that when they brought the water from the Shiloach through the Sha'ar Hamayim, they would sound the shofar. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Tekia trua tekia. Okay. All right. So the point we have is that this idea of musical accompaniment. Now, with what goes on in this case, with probably the Nisu Hamayim. Right. So what happens? Hamisha. It was either Khalil, uh, the flute was sounded either five days or six days out of the holiday. Why? It wasn't sounded on Yom Tov, or, okay? It wasn't sounded on Shabbat. Okay. Not on Yom Tov. Okay, so the Gemara, the Mishnah and the Gemara is going to refer to that momentarily. Zehu Hechalil shall beit Hashoava. Okay, this is the Khalil that was utilized as part of the Shoeva, the water drawing celebration. I'll translate it that way. Sheino doche, lo et a Shabbat, velo et a Yom Tov. It does not override either Shabbos or the Yom Tov itself. Gemara, let's go on. Itmar, and about this it was said as follows Rav Yehuda and Rav Ena, the two of them had a bit of a different version. Chad Tani Shoava, one taught that we're talking about the water drawing celebration. The Chad Tani Chashuva, and one taught it as it was an significant or important, okay, uh, observance. Amar Mar Zutra, says Mar Zutra. Mar Tani Shoava, okay, the one who taught it was connected with the water drawing. Lo mishtabesh, he didn't make an error. Uman detani chashuva lo mishtabesh. And the one who taught that it was a significant or important uh, observance also was not making an error. As we go on, man detani shoava lo mishtabesh. The one who taught it was water drawing, didn't make an error dichtiv because it cites a pasuk. He could cite the pasuk right? Clearly the Pasuk telling us, right? That you shall draw water with rejoicing. And the one who taught it as significant, he did not make an error either. Why is that the case? Right? Based on what Rav Nachman says, Mitzvah that it is an important mitzvah, right? And it uh, is uh, associated with uh, the creation days, six Ooh. days of creation, okay? Tanu Rabbanan. So now we have a new brighter. Echalil doche et ha-shabbat, devrei Rabbi Yossi bar Yehuda. According to Rabbi Yossi here, it does override Shabbos. The chachamim umrim, but the sages say, Af Yom Tov no Doche. Even the Yom Tov, it does not override. Okay? So certainly not Shabbos. Right? Amar Rav Yosef says, 
Rav Yosef is going to give attempt to give a clarification of the machloket. Machloket b'shir shel korban. Okay, the argument is in regards to the particular psalm that was recited along with the offering. Whether or not music. Well, we're going to wait. Start, you're jumping ahead a little bit. Hold on. Okay, with regards to this psalm, okay, we're going to see how do we understand how could he argument would the argument be what number psalm to be recited or is he going to say how the psalm is to be recited and that's what we're going to see is the implication okay so what happens the rabbi yossi savar because rabbi yossi is of the opinion ikashi rabbi kli that the essential aspect of Doing the psalm is through a musical instrument. Va'avodahi, and that is part of the practice, part of the ritual practice. V'dochet ha-Shabbat, and therefore it overrides the Shabbos. V'rabbanan savrei ikar shira bapeh, and the rabbis felt the essential aspect was by voice, the singing of the psalm. Right? The love avodahi. And it really isn't an essential part of the avoda, of the ritual practice. And therefore, it does not override the Shabbos. But everyone is in agreement that the psalm identified with the Nisu Hamayim the water drawing celebration, that is an example of joyfulness, right? Okay, and therefore, ve'ena doche et ha-shabbat, and it therefore does not, however, override Shabbos. Now, Amar Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef continues to present his argument. Mina amina de baha pligi, on what basis do I say this was the issue of, that they were arguing about? The Tanya is taught elsewhere in a bright. Kli sharet sha'asa'an shall eight a kli sharet. I'm going to you, translate that as a instrument or a utensil used as part of the avoda. Okay? Sha'asa'an shall eight that was fashioned out of wood, Rabbi, a Rebbe, okay, okay, right. Rebbe Posel, Rebbe says it's invalid, the Rebbe Yossi by Yehuda Machshi. And Rebbe Yossi, the son of Yehuda, says it is valid, okay? Now we know, I'm gonna interrupt for a quick minute. Most of the utensils used in the base of Mikdash were made from gold or right metal, gold or silver. Okay, so here, how can we say that a potential utensil used in the base of Mikdash made from wood would still be acceptable? We're going to get to it. No, no, because the Hashman noise. Okay. Violates. Okay. Next oh, we'll see. Okay, we're going to use a different model example. Okay. My love, Bahakamif again. So, what are we therefore saying that they're arguing about? Man de Mechshir, the one who says it's valid. And that was Rabbi Yossi, right? Savar Ikar Shirabikli was of the view that the essential element of the psalm. Uh, was musical instrument. The Alfinen me avuva de Moshe. And we learn this from the flute of Moshe. Okay, namely that a wooden flute was created at the time of Moshe and they still had it later on. And therefore, what happened according to both Art Scroll and, uh, and uh, Koren, they both give an interesting discussion. Uh, art scroll on 50b2 note 17 okay by the way okay is a, is significant but this flute was made out of wood 
according to the different explanations, they plated this flute with uh, some part of it with metal, gold perhaps. They found that it changed the tone of the flute and therefore they removed that metal plating, okay? So if you could have this flute made of wood, okay? And it was still usable in the base of Mikdash, okay? And, and without the gold plating, and it could be used in the uh, part of the avoda, does that seem to imply that other wooden utensils could be utilized as part of the avoda in the base hamikdash, or is that item an exception? Okay. Yes. yes. All the same. Right. Right. Okay, but you had to be a Levite, Sam, to do that. Maybe not. Maybe not. We'll see. No. Oh, oh, oh. Wait. Let's get to the musical part first. Okay. All right. So what happens? Uman de Pasil and the one who said it was not valid, Savar Ikarshi Rabape, was of the impression, the perspective, that the essential aspect of the of the uh, psalm was vocal. Okay. Velo Yalfinin me avuva de Moshe. And we do not learn from the example of the flute of Moshe. So the Gemara now comes back. So this was uh, how Rab Yosef was explaining the essence of the machlo. Lo, no, says the Gemara. Okay. The kuli alma ikar shirabikli. No, everyone may be of the opinion that the essential aspect of the of the presentation of the psalm is is by using a musical instrument. Vahacha, badanin efshar misha e efshar And what they're arguing about, okay? I'm going to translate this basically and then try to explain is the use of something that's possible, okay, from something that's impossible, so to speak, is what they're arguing about. It's the use of Moshe's flute as a wooden service vessel, as a paradigm, okay, for other uh, vessels for, for the service for the avoda in the temple, okay? That's what the question comes down to. That's the basis for a Svira that you can't use wooden, but you, I mean, you can't use the instrument, but you do the acapella, you can sing. Under what circumstances? On anything, because you can't have symbols on Svira. No? Uh, I'm not, I don't, like yeah, I don't Sfira. think there's a, I would make a parallel. Yeah. So in, in the base of Mikdash, anything that was 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 not issued followed in the base of Mikdash. Right. Playing a musical instrument is only a gazera less than two years. Right. So we're we're so going to get to some of that. Mikdash, they could play music on okay. the So the Gemara now tells us, Man de Machshir, the one who said it was valid, Savar Danin Efshar Misha Efshar was of the opinion that you could make a determination of what was possible from what was impossible. Uman de Pasil and the one who negated it, invalidated it. Savar lo danin efshar misha efshar. Okay? So the impossible was the wooden flute. So the possible would be other service, other vessels used in the avoda. Okay? And therefore, could we learn that regarding, we're going to raise another question, though, in a moment. Vi'ibayat ema. And if you want, I would say maybe the following view. The kuli alma de ikar shi Maybe I'm going to argue the opposite way and say that the essence of the recitation of the psalm was vocal. That was the case, oral. 
And we cannot learn that what's possible from what's impossible. And here in this case, and what they were really arguing about was the what we could learn regarding the fashioning of the menorah, okay? As to whether what was done, okay? How we could determine that on one of two hermeneutical principles, either the principle of klal uprat, okay? Or the principle of ribui umiut. No. Okay, now, exactly. Klal uprat, remember, we include every morning when we say the principles of Rabbi Yishmael. Okay? Ribui umiut was the principle by Rabbi Akiva. The results of those two approaches are quite different. I'm not going to go into it in detail, but if you're interested, note 19 in Art Scroll on 50B2 gives you more details, okay? And Koren, if you want, also has an extensive note on this as well, okay? But there is a major difference between use of those, the two different approaches as to what the result. Okay? Is there any significance that the music was being played from the mouth rather than like the violin? Still being powered by this one. No, they well, also so. had a lyre, which was played by the okay. string. The, the reason like it a, says flute is because it can sustain that instrument, but they had a whole um, orchestral section of flutes and lyres and right. trumpets. L Y R E. It's like a harp, kind of harp. Okay. Uh, again, if you're interested, I suggest you look at a picture in the Koran where they have a drawing of the Levites on, uh, okay, Levi, theoretically, a drawing where they're uh, standing up on their, uh, on the duchen, and they have a row, they have a picture where some are playing instruments and, and, and some are as part of a a cappella choir, okay? I might tell you, by the way, also, if you ever get the chance to be in Israel and go to the music museum, okay? It is well worth it. If you only go at the very end, after you go through the museum, is they have a video uh, presentation, okay? With earphones as to how the avoda went on in the base of Mikdash. At the Music Museum in Jerusalem, it's okay. It's the equivalent of the Grand Old Opera. Well, I wouldn't Not share exactly. it exactly. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but but I will no I will tell you that this, I saw it years ago, and I went into the gift store of the music, and I asked if I could buy the tape, the tape or the video. They won't sell it. So you want to pay admission and do it again? Okay, I probably will next time I go. Okay. Also, I believe when you, if you go to the hotel, yeah, they, they also have a similar uh, video presentation. But personally, I didn't find it as well done as the one at the music music. That was in virtual. What? In virtual, they have it. Yeah. But they have, but if you get a chance, it's well worth seeing something like that because it really gives a much better feel for some of this material. Okay, anyway, let's finish up, right? Okay, so it regards to the, what regards to fashioning the menorah. What system did they, what approach did they use? Okay, Rebbe Dirash, okay, Klale Uprate. Rebbe used Klale Uprate. Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda, Darish, Ribuyu, Miute. And he used the other. Rabbi Darish, Klali, Prate. Why? Because he said the following. This is how he expounded the Psuki. Va'asita menorat, all right? That you make the menorah. Klal, general principle. 
Zahav Tahor, from pure gold. Prat, that's the detail. Okay? Miksha Ta'aseh menorah, a single, I'm translating it loosely, a tr single unit. All right? Pounded out. Right? Pounded, right? Chaza uklau, right? Klau uprat uklau, iatadan ele ke'ein haprat. Right? Right, so that's our general view rule there, right? Iyatadan ela ke'en haprat. You only come to a conclusion that which is the uh, okay, the real, the detailed item. Okay, what happens? Mahaprat mifurash shel matechet. The same way the detail here refers to metal. Afkol shel matechet. And so therefore the menorah becomes the paradigm for other uh, kalim, other uh, utensils in the base of Mikdash. And therefore that all utensils must be made from metal. Okay. Rabbi Yossi bar Yehuda Darish ribui umiute. Rabbi Yossi used a different approach, right? Amplification and limitation might be one translation. Va'asita menorah. Notice the dashing the same pasuk, just a different method. Okay, riba that amplifies. Zahav tahor me'at, me'at actually, right? And then he says, right? Okay, the pure gold that limits it. Mikshet ha'aseh menorah, chazar v'riba. Okay. Then hammering out the menorah, again it amplifies. Riba umi eight riba, riba hako. And therefore, what does it do? It includes all. If it includes all, it means no. therefore other uh, any, material. any material, other materials could be utilized as part of the ut for utensils in the base of Mikdash. Why is that significant? Okay, because it could include even earthenware. No, that's what? the mere, uh, that's the- But I'm sorry, it excludes that's earthenware. That's the only- mirror. Right, excludes earthenware, right? That's what I meant. Okay, now my Rabbi, what's with, uh, okay, so what is there? Rabbi, call me, my me eight, me eight, okay? All right, so what did he create? Shel Cheres. That's what I didn't get to, and that's what I meant. What did Rebbe exclude? He excluded further. Just yes. rolling over, Rama Rabbi, Rabbi, Rav Papa. This is Rav Papa telling us, Kitna'ai. This was a Machloket Tana'im. Okay, and then I'm going to finish up. Avdei Kohanim, Hayu Divrei Rabbi Meir. Who were the players of the instruments? The servants of the Kohan. Rabbi Yossi Omer, Mishpachet Beit HaPagrim, Mishpachet Beit Tzifrai, these two families. Okay, um, all right, all right. And what happens? Ume Amaos. And they were from the city of Amaum. Hayu. Shahayu Masi'in Lekuhuna. And because they were significant, that they could play the instruments as part of the avodas. Okay, they had a special status. Okay, and therefore they were able to marry with Kohanim. Okay, the daughters. And we're going to pick up tomorrow there. And just finish the price in one more sentence. Rabbi Hanina ben Antigonus Omer, what Leviim are you? Instead, he argues that they were Levites. Okay. All right. I'm not sure if that. No, 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 no. Instruments with the. Okay. No, no, no. 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 They tried metal plating it to make it all metal, but it wrecked the sound. So they. They did not. So now the question is, is right. the music, right. 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 interest right. rates right. music right. of right. Right. and his and the Bodo, that proves right. that you can have play Okay, Harvey. All right.
if it was simply a yeah when we get more info on a on a see him we'll let you know too have a good day okay thank you